So we just talked in the previous lesson about measurements and the accuracy of measurements. And what this lesson is going to do is it's going to enable us to convert between different units of measurement. So for example, some common units that you use for volume, for example, you've we've talked about liters, we've got milliliters, we've got quarts, we've got pints, we've got gallons. For length, we can talk about miles, kilometers, centimeters, millimeters. For time, we can talk about seconds, hours. For mass, we can talk about kilograms or grams or tons, etc. And so what we're going to be doing in this lesson is I'm going to be showing you the proper procedure for how to convert between different units of a type of measurement. Now, there is one concept that I wanted to first introduce, and that is this concept of a prefix. Now, a prefix is simply a letter that you can put in front of a unit that will cause that unit to increase or decrease in size. So the first concept, I'm going to go to the middle right here, and it's base units. Okay? So base units are your typical units that don't have prefixes, so meters, seconds, liters, grams. As soon as you put a prefix in front of it, that letter, you will change the value of that unit. So I'm going to start with one that you're probably familiar with, centi. Okay? So one centi base unit, so remember base unit could be one centimeter, for example, one centimeter equals 10 to the negative second meters. So by putting the C, the centi, in front, I've changed the value of that unit and I've made it quite a bit smaller. Because instead of having one meter, now one centimeter is 10 to the negative second meters. I've decreased the value by a hundredfold. Okay, so a couple of other prefixes you might be familiar with. One milli, so this could be one millimeter equals 10 to the negative third meters or it could be one milliliter equals 10 to the negative third liters. So the base unit can be either meters, seconds, liters, grams. The value though of that prefix, what it does to the unit is the same. So if I put a milli in front, it's now gonna make it a thousand fold smaller, 10 to the negative third. Okay, so I'm gonna just read through these and make sure they make sense to you. If you put the unit tera in front, so for example, let's do one terameter. One terameter, equals 10 to the 12th meters, okay? So I just made that unit much bigger, 10 to the 12th meters. By putting a capital G in front, one giga, let's say one giga second, is 10 to the 9th seconds. One megagram, let's say for example, capital M, megagram, equals 10 to the 6 grams. This is one you should be familiar with. One kilometer, or one kilosecond, or one kiloliter, or one kilogram, equals 10 to the third either meters, seconds, liters, or grams. One hectometer equals 10 to the second meters, and one deca second or one decameter equals 10 to the 10 to the first or just 10 seconds or meters. So notice all of the prefixes above this base unit, by putting those prefixes in front, you actually make the unit larger. Okay. However, we go below Deci, one decimeter equals 10 to the negative first meters. As we said before, one centimeter equals 10 to the negative second meters. One milliliter equals 10 to the negative third liters. One, and this symbol is a micro, so it's a long stem for the, and then it's just a U, okay? So one micrometer, for example, equals 10 to the negative six meters, or one microliter is 10 to the negative six liters. One nanometer equals 10 to the negative ninth meters. One picoliter equals 10 to the negative 12th liters. Okay. So by putting a prefix in front, you change the value of the unit. If we're talking about these guys above your base unit, these guys, you're making the unit larger by putting a prefix in front. You're talking about these guys, you're making the unit smaller. Now, the good news is you don't need to memorize these. However, you'll get pretty used to using them, but I will always give you that relationship, okay? So let's actually look at some unit conversions and we'll use these relationships as we go. So here are the steps that you need to complete for unit conversion. Step one, you need to write your given. So let's look at our example as we go through our steps. It says how many meters are in 14.2 decameters. So my given here is 14.2 decameters. That's the value that is given to me. 
All right, step one is done. Now I need to crisscross swoosh. So what that entails, crisscross swoosh. Okay, step three, write the unit that needs to be canceled in the denominator. So since I'm trying to get into meters, I wanna get out of decameters. So I'm gonna put decameters on bottom. Okay. And then step four tells you write the unit you wanna to convert to in the numerator. Well, I wanna get into meters, okay? So it says write in the conversion factor. So the relationship between meters and decameters. This will be given to you or this table up here will be, but let's look, deca. It says one deca base unit equals 10 base units. So in this case, since I'm dealing with meters, it would be one decameter equals 10 meters. So I'm gonna put in that relationship right here. So I have one decameter equals 10 meters, okay? And you'll use the relationship that's given to you. you don't, you're not expected to memorize that. So I'm gonna take 14.2, and because my number is in the numerator, I'm gonna multiply. If it were in the denominator, I would divide, but it's in the numerator, so I'm gonna take 14.2 and multiply it by 10, and so my answer I get is 142 meters. Before I'm done, there are two things you always need to double check before you finish a problem. The first is significant figures. This, the 10 meters equals one decameter, that is a relationship. So that will not count towards significant figures, but 14.2 will. Well, 14.2 has one, two, three sig figs. The answer I wrote, 142, also has three sig figs. So I'm good there. And the last thing I need to check is do I have units? And I put meters. So I'm good to go. Okay, let's look at the next example. All right, so as a reminder, first step, I have to write my given. So I'm told I have 5.34 centimeters, and now it wants me to convert to inches. So I'm not using prefixes, the prefix relationships right now, but I do give you the relationship. I tell you one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. So I wrote, completed my first step. I'm gonna crisscross swoosh. Okay. I'm going to put the unit I want to get out of on bottom, and I'm going to put the unit I want to get into on top. Well, the question is asking me to get into inches, so I'm going to put inches on top. Now I need to put the relationship. So this tells me one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. Okay, so I'm going to take my calculator out, 5.34. I'm gonna divide that by 2.54. And the reason why I divide is the 2.54 is in the denominator. So the unrounded value that I get here is 2.102, and I'm just gonna to go to 36, okay? Now, remember the one and the 2.4, that is a relationship. So I'm not gonna look at that for sig figs. Instead, I'm gonna look at the 5.34. Well, that has one, two, three sig figs, which means I want my final answer to have three sig figs as well. So I'm gonna keep the two, the one, the zero. The two does not round the zero up. So I have 2.10. I've got the correct number of sig figs. Now I just need the correct units. And my units here are gonna be inches. And that's my answer. Okay, let's look at the next example. All right. 863 kilograms and I want to get into milligrams. So my given is 863 kilograms. And I'm gonna crisscross swish. Now, here's the tricky part. If you look at the table that I gave you for the relationship with prefixes, notice the relationship I know between kilograms and grams is this right here. I don't know the relationship between kilograms and milligrams. That's not given to me. But I do know the relationship between milligrams and grams. Which would get you thinking, what if this isn't just a one-step problem? I know the relationship between kilograms and grams, and I know the relationship between grams and milligrams. Can I do two steps? And the answer is yes. So let's see what that would look like. Well, I know I want to get out of kilograms. Okay. And the first thing I want to do is I want to get into grams. And the reason why I want to get into grams is I know the relationship between grams and kilograms. 
I don't, at the top of my head, know the relationship between kilograms and milligrams. That being said, if you know how to do it, if you've been taught how to do that and you can do that in your head, fantastic, go for it. Just don't get it wrong. But if you don't and you want to be given your conversion factors always, you first need to go from kilograms into grams. Then from grams, because I'm not done, I want to get into milligrams, I'm going to get out of grams by putting grams on bottom, okay? And then I'm going to put milligrams on top. So what I've effectively done is I've gone from kilograms to grams, then I got out of grams by canceling them out, and now I'm in milligrams. So now I'm gonna put the relationships. Well, if I look at the table, the relationship between kilograms and grams, I know that one kilogram equals 10 to the third grams, because one kilo base unit equals 10 to the third base unit. So I'm gonna put a one in front of my kilogram and a 10 to the third in front of grams. Now I need to go back and look at the relationship between grams and milligrams, okay? One milligram equals 10 to the negative third grams. So I'm gonna put those in. So one milligram is 10 to the negative third grams. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 863, I'm gonna multiply it by 10 to the third because the 10 to the third is in the numerator, and then I'm gonna divide by 10 to the negative third, and I'm gonna get my answer. And so what I got was 8.63 times 10 to the 8. Okay? And my units are milligrams. Okay? Now, remember I need to double check two things. Sig figs. Well, remember 10 to the third and 10 to the negative third, those are relationships, so I'm going to ignore that for sig figs. 863 has three sig figs, 8.63 has three sig figs as well. My final units were milligrams, I put milligrams, and I'm good to go. Let's look at another situation that I could have. Well, here I say I have 288 inches squared, so I'm going to put 288 inches squared. Okay, crisscross swish. I'm going to put the unit I want to get out of on bottom, so inches squared is on bottom, and I want to get into feet squared up top. Okay. So notice, I'm going to pause for a second because we've got a situation here. Notice the relationship I gave you there is 12 inches equals 1 foot. Okay. But the issue is I don't care about inches and feet. I'm asking about inches squared and feet squared. So what I need to do to these units is I need to square them. And the cool thing is you can actually just square this entire relationship. Because now what you'll have, 12 squared is 144. My units, instead of just being inches now, are inches squared. One squared is one, and now I have feet squared. So now I have the relationship I want, feet squared and inches squared, right? So I can plug that in. So keep in mind, if your units are ever squared, but the relationship that's given to you is not, you actually have to square the relationship. Or if it's cubed, you have to cube the relationship. Okay? So one foot squared equals 144 inches squared. Okay? So now what I can do is I can solve this. So I'm going to take 288. And I'm going to divide it by 144 because 144 is in the denominator. And the answer I get is 2 feet squared. So remember, before I can box off this answer, I need to check sig figs and units. So 288 has 3 sig figs. Well, I've got a problem. 2 here only has 1 sig fig. So normally I'm reducing the number of sig figs to fit, but sometimes I'm going to actually have to add sig figs. Well, how would I do that? Well, 2 only has one sig fig, but if I made this 2.00, that now has three significant figures. My units were good. They were feet squared. Okay, and that's my answer. So now I can actually box that thing off. Okay, let's look at the next question. I give you 2.4 decimeters squared. And I ask you to get into decimeters squared. 
Now notice, I know I've got two units with prefixes, deci and deca, which tells me this is going to have to be a two-step problem because I don't know the relationship between deci and deca. It's not given to me, but I do know the relationship between decimeters and meters and meters and decameters. So if you're ever given two different units, both with prefixes, it's going to be two steps unless you can do that in your head, which I'm not going to teach because I just want you to be able to use what's given to you. Okay, so I'm going to crisscross swoosh. I want to get out of decimeter squared, so I'm going to put decimeter squared on bottom. Okay, and the first thing I want to get into is my meter squared because I know that relationship. So I'm going to put meter squared on top. I don't want to stay in meter squared though. I'm asking about decimeter squared. So I'm going to put meter squared on bottom to get out of meter squared. And I'm going to put decimeter squared on top. Now comes the challenging part. So i got to figure out these relationships. So let's figure out the relationship between deci and meter really quickly. So if I scroll back, they're in one decimeter equals 10 to the negative first meters. So I'm going to put, I'm going to rewrite what was just, I just saw. So one decimeter equals 10 to the negative first meters. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to look at deca and I see that one decameter equals 10 to the first meters. Now, just like the previous problem, those relationships are great, but that's not what it's asking about. It's asking about decimeter squared and decimeter squared. So what we need to do is we need to square our relationships and our units. So now what that becomes is one decimeter squared, because one squared is one, equals now 10 to the negative second meter squared because 10 to the negative first raised to the second. Remember, when you raise an exponent, you actually multiply the coefficient. So one times two is two, okay? For this one, I want, again, it to be squared. So I'm gonna square this unit. I'm gonna square this unit, okay? So one decameter squared equals 10 to the second meter squared. And now I can plug in all of these relationships. So I have one decimeter squared on bottom, 10 to the negative second meter squared on top, okay? One decimeter squared on top, 10 to the second meter squared on bottom, okay? So now I'm gonna take 2.4, multiply by 10 to the negative second, and then divide by 10 to the second, and what I end up getting is 2.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. My units are gonna be decameters squared. Okay, so I gotta check sig figs and units. 2.4 has two sig figs, 2.4, still two sig figs. Decameter squared is my final unit. Decameter squared is my final unit. And I'm good to go. So looking at all of these examples, for some of them, for example, like number two or maybe number one, they might seem really easy to you and you say, you know what, I don't need to show this setup, no big deal. My answer to you is no matter how easy it is, I have to see the setup. I give points for seeing setup, not just the answer. If you just put an answer with the correct units, I can only give you one point. And the reason why I'm so strict with that is as you've seen, you might have a one step, you might have a two step problem. You might even have a four or five step problem when we get into the concept of stoichiometry, which uses these conversions, right? This whole technique of unit conversion is gonna get, it's not hard, but if you don't have the basics of how to set it up, it is gonna be really hard. So that's why with basic unit conversion that we're doing right now, I ask you to show it properly. And that is the only way I will give you credit on, your, on these notes, on your worksheet, on your quiz, on your test.